class has just started at Jervis Bay Primary School, located on Newan Country on the New South Wales South Coast. Good morning, Booking Yowls. Good morning. All right, here we go. Are we ready? These students have only been at primary school for five months, but they've already participated in a nationwide survey that will help shape future policies about them. It's called the Australian Early Development Census, and it's conducted every three years, with nearly all children in their first year of school across the country. The information gathered helps track how many kids are developmentally ready. And it's the key data used in the Closing the Gap Agreement. I guess with things like their uh, physical well-being and their health, we're looking for their general readiness to actually just be at school for a full school day. Ngunnawal woman and principal Lana Reid says students are graded in five domains that cover both physical health and cognitive skills. Whether it's kids are, you know, counting backwards from 10, whether they love to read, whether they really enjoy stories, whether they can um, recognise that letters have sounds and that words have meaning, even if they don't know what they are yet. Over the past decade, standards have been improving. But the last survey, which was conducted in 2021 during the COVID pandemic, saw levels drop across the board. Half of non-Indigenous kids were considered on track. But for First Nations children, it's only 34%. It might be that they're um, not able to focus or, or concentrate for long periods of time. If they're not um, socially mature, then we might find that there's a lot more issues with them relating to their peers or uh, sorting out issues or problems. Number three, around the tree, around the tree. Number three. Most of the students who go to this school are Aboriginal, so their teacher takes the advice of a cultural consultant. All right, how do we make a number five? He's got a hat. While this school is proud of their achievements, there are big gaps across Australia. In the Northern Territory, just under half of non-Indigenous kids were deemed developmentally ready. For First Nations kids, that number is 16.4%. The worst results in the nation. It should never be acceptable that where you are born and who you are born to impacts on your life trajectory. Arinda and literature woman Catherine Little runs the organisation that advocates for First Nations little ones. Families cannot thrive if they do not have the architecture and the infrastructure in their communities to thrive. She says funding has not been consistent in meeting the needs of Aboriginal children across election cycles. Now that is a failure by governments to invest in the right set of criteria into the right type of service delivery and to move at the speed that it needs to move at. Earlier this year, a review by the Productivity Commission of the Closing the Gap Agreement found governments at all levels do not face timely or appropriate consequences for failure to meet the commitments they made. Responsibility for childhood development is spread across both state and federal governments and over multiple departments. When 7.30 posed the question of who should be held accountable at a Commonwealth level for the growing gap, neither the Minister for Early Education, Ann Ali, nor the Coalition's Shadow Minister, Angie Bell, accepted sole responsibility. Angie Bell said blame could not be squarely placed on the former Morrison government, as the gap widened during a once-in-a-century pandemic and that closing the gap is a joint initiative. While Anna Lee admitted more needs to be done and that most progress is being seen where governments are working in partnership with First Nations organisations and communities. In Mbantua, Alice Springs, Liam and Nicole live in a two-bedroom apartment with their five kids. Four and a half years ago, they moved from the remote APY lands in South Australia into temporary housing here in town so that their kids could go to school. This here, we're going to put all your little lollies in it for school. Uh, for school, for birthday party. Morning, Casey. What's helped us a lot is the bus pickups in the morning, dealing with 
five kids, seven o'clock in the morning, while it's still freezing, it's very, very difficult. Central Australian Aboriginal Congress in the Northern Territory is a one-stop shop, acting as both an early education centre and a health clinic for families. Three-year-old Casey's been attending their childcare service for two years. She's just blowing us away with new things every day. There's little routines there, you know, and how she communicates with the educators and just English words. All of that stuff, counting, they do ABC, they do the one, two, three. This is just screening. Um, Today, Southern Aranda and Pitanjara woman Samara Swan is checking the kids' developmental progress before they go to preschool. Doing that screening helps us identify areas of strength and then areas where we can best support them. So I ask her, what do you like to eat? You want to go there, milk or there? The latest census data shows 28% of First Nations kids might have a developmental difficulty. That's more than double their non-Indigenous peers. It's an early intervention, getting them on that, getting them on their wait lists if they um, might need additional support. I think we do need yeah. more programs that will target these kids with uh, health conditions that are going to affect them later on in life. For some children, English is not their first language. At least six Indigenous languages are spoken at the centre. We encourage um, mum to direct and do the activities in their own language and they respond um, much better to that. So, see? Yep, nose. Where's that nose? Yeah. The two-way learning, like, they get to experience things still uh, as they would at home, uh, being with family, and um, then also the mainstream way. For workers like Samara, it's not just about supporting the kids, but also their parents. Support with filling out enrolment forms, because even walking through the doors of a preschool can be quite, you know, um, scary for family, especially if they've been living at bush. Moving from the bush into town, often into overcrowded houses, means everyday items are stretched. Sometimes our people can't send our kids to school because they've got no food. Or sometimes they can't send them to school because they've got dirty clothes because they can't, you know, wash, do washing and that because they, they've got an unstable home. To close the gap, 55% of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children must be considered on track in all developmental domains in just seven years' time. Back in Jervis Bay, the Guggenyol class is waiting their turn to give a special performance. They have been working on it all term, a rap about bush medicine. I think we've got a long way to go before every child in Australia walks in um, at, at the same level when they come into their early years of learning. Catherine Little says improving access to early education is crucial if we are serious about improving the lives of First Nations people. It means that we're less likely to see children failing at school. It means we're less likely to see children coming into contact with the child protection system. It means we're less likely to see children hitting juvenile justice systems. Closing the gap starts with our children.